party the answers. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure there. Um, so there we have it, really. Um, this is the nucleus of the issue with all works with great historic buildings throughout the country because it's basically a tension between um, the, the artifact that the building is and the fact that it's built to be used by people. And Tobit has already touched on that. So is the Painted Hall a museum with a fabulous artifact within it? Or is it a, a living, intensively used space? And of course, it's both. And that's the huge difficulty of the, uh, uh, the, the, the issue that the Grange Foundation face. Um, the, the Foundation's vision statement uh, for the Old Royal Naval College states its priorities uh, to conserve and enhance the heritage of the site and to resolve the conflicts between the types of heritage, the different types of heritage, to improve access, including for physical and sensitive, uh, sensory impairment, and also to improve intellectual access and understanding. And how wonderful if everybody could, could have heard the presentations that we've already had this evening. That is incredible intellectual access that we've just had. Now, it's worth mentioning that um, the Old Royal Naval College receives over 1.7 million visitors each year. 8,000 school children take part in, in workshops. There are over 60 weddings and 50 filmings and photography shoots within the Old Royal Naval College, and a great percentage of that focuses on the Painted Hall. Um, uh, and, of course, that's not even taking into account the many evening events of one sort or another, a lot of them involving a significant number of people and catering. So, uh, and it's not only those sorts of uh, events, um, no, that's the point here, um, but it's, it's filmings we've mentioned and this has to be the image, which I think is, is, is one of the most famous images. I mean, forget the paintings, but Johnny Depp in Pirates of the Caribbean filming in the Painted Hall. And it, this is the point, because actually film setups uh, and filming and, and uh, D-rigs are very, very physical things. And so there's an awful lot of physicality to what goes on in the Painted Hall, not least um, catered events, and I do recall from the conservation of the, um, the, the West Wall painting in the Upper Hall, one, one of the processes was removing vestiges of food um, thrown throw up the wall. And so it's that sort of impact that one is dealing with, because of course the, the, the building and the painted hall was built as a dining hall, actually. Um, uh, it just happened to be a very fabulous uh, dining hall, and it was never, ever really properly used as a dining hall until, until then, very, very late in its history. But it is this tension between the use of the building, be, be, uh, between the people who are producing so much moisture, um, uh, and actually want to use doors, which Tobit has mentioned, to get in and out. And so the west doors behind the, uh, uh, the, the, the actors down there, by the look of it, um, uh, are a real problem because uh, those of us who have been involved with paint at all uh, for any amount of time know that if you stand up in the upper hall by the west wall painting in the winter time when there's a bit of a breeze and somebody opens the, uh, uh, the, the main doors and comes in, you can feel the breeze at the other end of the hall. And so this drives the pollution. Well, how on earth do you deal with that? And uh, how do you do it without destroying something which is uh, a, a principal part of the, the uh, enormous visual impact that entering this, this building has? Um, uh, and so that, that issue has been a major, major uh, concern for the foundation. So uh, the foundation, uh, over the past couple of years, has developed an all-encompassing strategy which is aimed towards uh, conserving, uh, state-of-the-art conservation, obviously, conserving this, this remarkable artifact. Also, stabilizing as far as re is reasonably possible the physical uh, and environmental impact. Uh, sorry, the, the, the um, uh, um, environmental uh, uh, conditions in the painted hall. 
um, uh, but at the same time allowing it to continue to be used um, uh, and visited and seen and experienced and accessed physically and intellectually by a huge number of people. How difficult is that? It's very difficult indeed. So uh, one of the strategies that uh, David has, has already touched on is, is uh, controlled uh, heating installation. And Tobit, I believe what we're talking about is instead of a thermally controlled installation, the intention is that it's a relative humidity controlled installation. And so that will immediately uh, uh, modulate uh, the way that the interior is heated so that the, the, the uh, crucial effect of relative humidity on the paintings can be um, uh, moderated and, and the relative humidity stabilized. And that's making the jagged line less jagged to it, but I, I think you were talking about. So the foundation, um, apart from the, uh, the conservation team, have also employed a very clever firm of design architects called Huberall Associates, who are, are uh, not only clever designers, but also very contextual designers. They tend to be modern designers. They do a lot of new building work but everything is within the context of very sensitive settings. So um, Hugh Broughton and, and his team have, have been designing the new heating system, which, which uh, Tobit has referred to. The old system being an air blown system, which is underneath in floor ducts, where the air just uh, sort of lazily drifts through and may eventually get out into the painted hall. And it's now going to be a pipe system with new uh, heaters along the, the wall perimeters, which will issue the heat in a much more controlled and controllable way. Uh, Tobit has also mentioned the uh, uh, solar control to the windows, blinds. Huge issue, because actually, Tobit said that it, actually it, it's, it's quite subtle. It is quite subtle, but it does actually change the architectural relationship with the interior of this building with its external setting. It, it modulates that impression you have of the external architecture when you're standing in the painted hall looking out through the windows. So these are compromises. These are, these are big and difficult issues. Um, environmental buffering, uh, Tobit has, has talked about. And um, you, you've just seen the version of of this uh, slide uh, in Tobit's presentation, where the, the principal measure, this, this huge change in thinking, which the Grand Grange Foundation have been brave enough to take on board, is to alter the way that the public come into the painted hall. So in terms of day-to-day -day access for the members of the public, the public will no longer come in through the principal processional doors which you are also used to doing and getting that incredible view of the painted hall. They will now come in through uh, a, a new uh, inclusive entrance from College Way, down through a system of ramps and hoist platforms and steps so that, that uh, um, uh, all can access in the same way. There will never again be a question of uh, a, a soul in a, a wheelchair having to go around by another door. Everyone comes in the same way and has the same experience. And so uh, by doing that and, and bringing people into the undercroft, you have a great hawk small space down there, which is actually currently um, uh, partitioned up by well-meaning partitions that were put up uh, uh, in the uh, early part of the 20th century. Um, uh, and through a lot of uh, careful thought, balancing of priorities, um, and uh, discussion and negotiation with, with um, Historic England as statutory authority, um, uh, agreement has been reached to remove those partitions. Because actually when they were put up, uh, they were a considerable degradation of what is a remarkable vaulted space down there. And so part and parcel of this proposal is to uh, bring back uh, the, the Hawksmoor vaulted undercroft as part of the architectural experience as a precursor, having moved through as a visitor and got your uh, interpretation, your, your, your information packs, uh, you then move up to the painted hall, up the flanking staircases, 
and you turn and you then get the powerful view. As you go up these steps, you suddenly get the uprush of space as you walk into the vestibule and then you turn and you get the powerful axial view. But whilst you're down here, you can get a lot of um, information, intellectual access and inclusive intellectual access in terms of uh, those who have every sort of impairment. All of that is being catered for, all of that is in the overall strategy for improving the way that the painted hall can be accessed and interpreted and understood. So it's a far-reaching proposal. There are an awful lot of threads here. Part of it, Tobit again has referred to, you've not only got buffering of doors and, and uh, uh, significant spaces to be walked through, but you also have a, a new screen up at this end here. So it's there which is in place of one of the um, uh, plasterboard partitions, which are, which are currently there. So here is Hugh Broughton, architect's uh, visual impression of how the undercroft might look as part of the visitor experience. And you're walking through, there can be a display of interpretive material. Um, uh, uh, information can come across in, in many different ways. The screen is being designed uh, by, um, uh, in conjunction with a specialist Italian company in order to get a finesse of glazing bar, a beautiful, fine, beautifully crafted detail which will speak the same language as Hawksmoor's windows, um, the, the iron parameter in the windows. So there's that level of thought going on as well. Um, we've talked about inclusive access, hoist platforms and so on and dedicated uh, presentation material because this, although Discover Greenwich will continue to be the, the first uh, point of arrival on this site, the link between Discover Greenwich and the Painted Hall is going to be engineered to be far stronger. So there will be a, a, a much greater emphasis on guiding visitors to the Painted Hall and having arrived through the new inclusive entrance into the undercroft, they get a dedicated interpretation and dedicated intellectual access to the Painted Hall and uh, then, then they go up for the Painted Hall experience. Well, as part of the Painted Hall experience, it is not only um, the Painted Hall as finished, uh, as a completed conservation paintings, conservation exercise, but it's also the actual process of conservation, which is a very, very remarkable uh, process. As Sophie has always already referred to, the Paintings Conservator uh, will be working up on a platform uh, across the entirety of the, the Painted Hall scene. Um, uh, it's a very large space up there. Uh, you could play football up there. Um, and the decision has been taken, as with the conservation of the upper hall paintings, um, the, uh, Sophie showed a slide of a scaffolding up there, which had a, its a conservator deck, um, and uh, during that time, there was, I think, a thousand members of the public visited the conservation in progress. And I'm sure that some of you went up, and it was a very, very remarkable experience being up close and personal with the paintings and talking to the conservators uh, about the work that was being carried out. Well, if you think of 1,000 for the upper hall, so it's the um, foundation's proposal now to have a remarkable number of people up. I think 50,000 is the target visiting members of the public, actually visiting the conservation of the paintings in progress. And for that purpose, a scaffolding has been designed with not one but two beautiful staircases, one either end, which is kind of useful for me to escape should the fire alarms go on. Um, but not only that, and I think unfortunately it's not shown on the drawing, but it is going to have its own hoist access platform which is useful in order for the conservators to get the and caboodle up to the conservation deck, um, but is also wonderful for anybody with any sort of uh, physical impairment uh, to get up to the conservation deck. 
So what do you think in terms of the currently 8,000 school children who have workshops uh, at the Old Royal Naval College? How fantastic for, for um, schools to bring classes of children uh, to, to, to be part of this amazing conservation program. So all of that is in the thinking, all of that is in the foundations, all encompassing strategy. Uh, uh, lastly, um, uh, the, the thinking involves altering the flexibility of use of the painted hall uh, in terms of catering, for example, different styles of catering and different styles of uh, events are being planned for. Um, and a new uh, means of escape, fire escape, has already been built out to King William Courtyard so that the numbers of people um, catered for in the Painted Hall uh, can be uh, uh, maintained. And I think the number currently is 440, isn't it? That's the, in, in terms of fire escape that the Painted Hall can accommodate. That's really important because, because uh, depressingly, income stream is really important in terms of sustainability of heritage. This is part of, this is woven in with the foundation's strategy. Not only this incredible conservation program, this incredible activity and interpretation program, but also uh, resilience and sustainability of all of the work that's being done. Um, these proposals involve significant change, as you see, all to support the remarkable conservation program. But that's what the ongoing chronology of change that all of our historic buildings in the country contain. And this program, I do believe, is going to write a remarkable new chapter in the history of the painted hall.